UFC welterweight Jordan Williams stops a would-be car thief. Oh, yeah. There you go, right there. So he saw you going inside. Uh-huh. Michael Bisping on the Believe You Me podcast goes on a rant about judging in MMA. Bisping says something needs to be done about it. It's a real issue. The judging is a real issue. They've got to do something about this. They've got to. Uh, they've got to. They, they, they've got to fix this. They've got to because it's not fair. It's not fair on the fighters. Everything they go through, you know, to go out there and sacrifice so much and put your body on the line. You know, I could go through it, but everyone knows the injuries that I've been through, that we all go through. And you do it on your quest for success. Of course, you're trying to pay, you're trying to earn a living for your family, but you're trying to work your way up. And a win or a loss, a lot of the time, results in 50% of your money being taken away. You're a failure in your quest. You drop down the rankings. Maybe you lose a world title fight. The ramifications and the consequences are absolutely massive. And judges need to be held accountable. They need to be held accountable. And I don't know what's going on. I don't know if they're not paying attention. I don't know if they're just not up to the job. Maybe they're just not skilled enough and they don't have enough grasp of the situation of mixed martial arts and what goes in to fully understand. But it's kind of getting beyond the joke now. Chad Mendez has started his training camp for his upcoming bare knuckle debut. The date or the opponent has yet to be announced. Michael Chandler thinks Dustin Poirier should wait for a fourth fight with Conor McGregor instead of accepting a title shot. Chandler told Helen Yee, man, if I'm Dustin Poirier, I'm just waiting for Conor 4. If Poirier goes and wins the title, can Conor come right back and fight Poirier if he has the title? Crazier things have happened. So if I'm Poirier, I'm just waiting out and waiting for Conor 4. Especially after he said numerous things about my wife and my kids and killing me. All that kind of stuff. But I also know that this is a testament to Poirier as a competitor. He wants to win the ultimate prize in mixed martial arts. He's been an interim champion, but he hasn't full-fledged 100% undisputed champion. So I think the competitor in him will go fight Charles Oliveira. But there's an inkling, there's a part of me that says he might as well wait out and get the big money fight in Connor. Dean Thomas previews Francis Ngannou versus Cyril Gan. Thomas speaks on the advantages Gan will have. You can still almost kind of tell what somebody's aptitude is and their potential is for getting better. Just the way Francis moves, you know, he's powerful, he's yeah. explosive, but again, there's something very robotic about him at times that it doesn't look like his aptitude for being a technician is there. When he knocked out Biggie Boy, I mean, it wasn't pretty. Right, it, it was, was devastating <laughs> and it was like, oh my God, don't ever get hit by this guy, but it wasn't pretty. So like his aptitude, for to be a technician just doesn't seem that high to me. And it's gonna be very difficult, I think, in the striking department for him to be able to keep up with Cyril unless he catches him, which is, I, I doubt that's gonna happen. Gay guard Musasi believes Tyron Woodley is in for a rude awakening against Jake Paul. On if Woodley can win, Gay guard went on to say, to be honest, no. You know, Tyron Woodley is 40. He has lost all of his recent fights. They chose him because he's a short guy. He's not a boxer. I don't know why people think he can box. Who said Tyron Woodley is a boxer? He has one right hand with a small glove. 100% it's not going to go well for him, but it's going to make money and I wish him well. I don't have anything against Tyron Woodley, but let's be honest. They didn't choose him because he's going to win. Jake Paul chose him because he thinks he's beatable. Nothing against Tyron Woodley. Ray Longo on the Anakin Florian podcast previews Francis Ngannou versus Cyril Gan. Longo says that he believes Gan will be the favorite going into the fight. First off, very special. More special than he was last week. You know what I mean? It definitely, 
look, Angano and, and, and Derek Lewis, they looked at each other for three rounds, right? This is my takeaway. They looked, nobody, I don't know if anybody landed a punch. It was a horrible fight, right? They were very, very cautious. This guy didn't care. This guy, you know, look, even between him and Aldo, the use of the jab alone was phenomenal, right? They just set everything up off the jab. They were pot shotting, or at least Cyril was, you know, pot shotting. But he wasn't afraid. He took his time like he always does. He's a very patient, well thought out, calm, cool, collective fighter who, when he gets you in trouble, it's a different animal, you know? Yeah. So he's got great killer instinct when he gets you in trouble. He's willing to wait for that opportunity and not overextend himself and make mistakes. Uh, I saw a really, really special guy that night against a guy that, you know, like again, even though the odds were, were, in, uh, were, were huge in uh, Cyril's favor, mm -hmm. uh, at any given point in time, this other guy could get you out of there. We've seen it a hundred times in the past, but this guy, I mean, he took him apart and he knocked him out. I mean, that's that's not easy to do. Yeah, I, man. Mean, I mean, easily. I would say he will be the favorite going into that Angano fight just based on that reason. Ally Quinta likes Aljamain Sterling's chances in the rematch against Piotr Jan. The two are scheduled to fight at UFC 267 on October 30th. Be sure to go subscribe to Al's new YouTube channel. As always, links in the description. Little, little adjustments he can make in that fight to have big results in the outcome so i'm looking forward to him doing that he's just uh he's work he's working hard he's just got back uh from surgery and a little while he's been training hard and i'm glad that he's feeling as good as he is as soon as he is after the surgery because they, they weren't sure sure how quick he'd be back but he's he just did a full week of training and uh he's looking freaking huge 135 he looks bigger than me it's crazy. He's a big dude at 35, man. He's he's he, he's just tall. He's almost as tall as me, and his he's just like his arms are big. I'm, I'm like, oh my god! Everyone, every single picture someone puts up, they go. I I I like count. I'm like count the comments until someone says, "How are you guys two different weight classes?" Aljo looks so big. I'm like, freaking, the guy's gigantic. It's like comparing us. You know what I mean? But. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that one, that's for sure. That's going to wrap it up for the news. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to Full Mount MMA and click the bell icon to be notified when we post future ones. Here are the three top comments from last video. The first one's from Lad. He says, I can't wait for Chael's video on his two biggest rivals fighting each other, referring to Tito Ortiz versus Anderson Silva boxing match becoming official. The second one says, well, curveball, with the Tito clip actually made me laugh out loud. He's going to get smashed. And the final one says, I'm way more excited to watch Anderson Tito than Anderson Logan. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured on the next one, all you have to do is comment down below. Also, be sure to check out the other types of MMA content we post on this channel. Click either of the two videos on the screen right now.